Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to another week. Uh, hope you have been having a good week. Uh, all right, before we begin today's class, let's just start with a word of prayer. Uh, could one of us please lead us in prayer? Sitkeno? Okay, go ahead, John. It's fine. Go ahead, John. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for this morning. We pray that even as we are going to learn from your word regarding evangelism, we pray that we will be able to understand, open the eyes of our understanding of God, that we will be able to find out the mysteries of your word and help us to walk in it, Lord Jesus, and help us the Paul to deliver your message in its full potential, God. We thank you for all of us. We thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Joan. Okay, so uh, let's just do, uh, quickly look at what we did last week, right? We looked at some important points last week. Uh, uh, we looked at uh, how, uh, you know, John the Baptist pointed out to Jesus. And just by that, you know, uh, trust that they had, the disciples were willing to, you know, believe in what John the Baptist said, and they went to Jesus, they followed Jesus, and Andrew was one of them. We also looked about uh, sharing the gospel through common interests, right? Uh, so especially when, uh, you know, even in this situation, Andrew finds his brother Peter, and he says, hey, we have found the Messiah. The common interest there was they were waiting for the Messiah. And so even as we you know, look out and evangelize with people, get opportunities, God opens divine encounters, look for common interests, right? Uh, for example, if somebody likes leading books, right? So you, you, you look for common interests in them. And, and so, for example, you are uh, somebody who uh, is into music. So you can, you know, through music, you can uh, share the gospel. And I know it's, uh, you know, it's easy to say, uh, but you know, there's a saying: easier said than done. Uh, but no, if we, you know, really try, if we really come out of that, uh, you know, that comfort zone, or if we come out of that feeling that okay, you know, the gospel is, you know, it's only for you know, Christians, or you know, what if I get persecuted? What if they get angry? If we come out of all of those inhibitions, really, it, uh, you know, evangelism becomes a lifestyle now. Uh, there will be times people reject us, people will not agree to us. Uh, and we studied about that, right? Just move on, uh, go on to the next person or uh, don't have to stay in that feeling, oh, he rejected me and he rejected the gospel. You don't have to feel anything and right? you can just move on. So we also looked at how, uh, you know, uh, in John, the book of John, again, uh, extending the invitation to a friend who was doubtful. Same thing happened after... Philip uh, meets Jesus. Uh, Philip goes and finds his friend Nathaniel, and Nathaniel is skeptical. He's just like, "Okay, Messiah, and uh, could anything come? Anything good come out of Galilee? Uh, doesn't sound like the Messiah. Where was he? What was he doing all this while? Uh, it was he did not uh, disbelieve, but there was, you know, uh, there was some sense of." skepticism in him okay uh, doesn't sound right uh, but until he you know uh, philip himself said come and see we have found the messiah and then later on there was a divine encounter the lord jesus uh, revealed himself to uh, nathaniel and so uh, we also looked at the power of a single invitation right uh, a single invitation is very powerful even if one person right accepts the lord uh, we never know what that one person can do. Create exploits for the kingdom of God. Right? Even when we look through the book of Acts, when uh, you know uh, 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 Aquila and Priscilla, they find Apollos, and they uh, you know Apollos is preaching about repentance and uh, the baptism of repentance, and then they go to him and says, "Hey, Apollos, uh, haven't you heard about the baptism of the Holy Spirit?" And he's like. I don't know. I haven't heard of it. And Aquila and Priscilla begin to sit with him and teach him what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is. And later on, in the book of Corinthians, remember Paul says, uh, who are we? Who's Paul? Who is Cephas? Who is Apollos? 
because later on Apollos became a powerful, powerful preacher in the whole of uh, Asia. So Corinth, um, Ephesus, everyone knew Apollos because you had a powerful uh, ministry going on there. So, so you never know what one, you know, seed that you, we sow in people's heart, uh, a, a single invitation can do uh, to the body of Christ, right? A single invitation. Uh, and so keep, be open. We looked at this as well, uh, you know, uh, sharing and count, sharing uh, messages, sharing s sermons, uh, uh, inviting to uh, Sundays where there are special Sundays, big Sundays and Easter, Christmas and all of that. Right. So let's move on from there. Before that, uh, did anyone get an opportunity to share the gospel any one of us, uh, did you get an opportunity? It's okay if you didn't, right? It's not like a homework you have to do. Uh, but did anyone get an opportunity to probably present the gospel to uh, maybe a friend or even to an unknown person? Go ahead, Jafina. Yeah, um, recently I got an opportunity to share the gospel with the girl in Uttar Pradesh. Uh, she texted me on uh, Instagram and she was like, just, she was sending a hi and I came to know her from someone else. And she was speaking and she was telling all the troubles in her life. And she was like, I have hemoglobin deficiency in my, there's a financial struggle that's going on. And she was a Sikh, she told, uh, we are Sikhism. And we worship our Guru Nanak. And okay, I <laughs> said, we were just talking as we were like good friends. And I told her about Jesus. I told her about how my life has been changed when I came to know about Jesus. And she was like, oh, we can have a relationship with God. It's not a religion. <laughs> so that she was touched by that. And I told her, yes, we're having a relationship. And we prayed, and I and I asked her, "You want me to pray for you?" And she was like, "Yes." She was, she immediately called me on Instagram through a video call, and we prayed together, and it was good for some time. and And then she was confused. You know, she's a teenager; she's confused again. Like there is this, we worship someone too, and I believe on him. So she was like, uh, she was like. Uh, I have known him all of my life. My parents have told about Guru Nanak and I believe on him. And I was still talking about Jesus, telling her all the things that he did on the cross. And she was she was in the state of confusion, but she did told me that there is something with Christianity. I believe on that. There is something that I felt when you prayed. There is something that is more than a vibe. And I told her, keep praying and you will know that this is the truth. And she was like, okay, I will. So somehow I planted the seed and I believe God will be growing that into a tree. Amen. Praise God. That's nice. Uh, thank you for sharing, Jafina. Yes, uh, as you said, you've planted the seed. Um, it may not be something that they believe immediately at times, right? It may take mm -hmm. uh, a series of, uh, you know, uh, conversations and, uh, you know, a series of, you know, uh, maybe presenting scriptures and presenting uh, prayer requests, presenting prayers for them. And uh, that's that's great. Thank you, Jafina, for sharing. Yeah. Anybody else? Uh, got an op Rosalind. Yes, go ahead, Rosalind. Praise the Lord, Pastor. Yeah, I too got an opportunity this week to share the gospel with this auntie of mine. Like, I don't know her much, but uh, recently she visited me at my place. And uh, she was... Um, was telling me about her mother who was admitted in the hospital um, and she was worried about her. So, you know, that's how, like, I thought, let me just pray for her mother and also share the gospel with her. And I shared the gospel with her and she, she was from a Buddhist community. So while I was sharing, uh, she said, yeah, we don't do any of these idol worship and all. So I said, yeah, that's, that's, that's good. Uh, but I want you to know about uh, you know 
Lord Jesus. And she said, I know about uh, Jesus. Yeah, I know I've seen. So I said, but you, you may not have heard about him, like, you know, why he came and what he did. So let me just tell you about him. And uh, I praise God. I got um, to tell, I shared with her the gospel. And um, she had this um, Android phone. And I just told her, no, you can also listen to this. She was, she was a Mara Maharashtrian. So I told her that you can also listen to the gospel uh, if you want to listen it, you know, listen to it in your own native language. So I showed her the link. I sent her the link, and I downloaded the Marathi Bible app in her mobile, and I showed her how she can, you know, just um, listen. And I told her to listen to John, and uh, uh, I also shared about Jesus, and uh, she was very excited, and she said, like, uh, uh, like I didn't know, like, you know, Jesus came for this reason, and uh, he died for. For the sin you know not only for uh for christians but for the whole world like you know so she was very excited happy at the same time and uh, i was so glad and i could do this and uh, she went um, she went back and now i'm in touch with her like uh, and i pray to god like yes as uh, jeffina said that the seed has been sown so yeah so i praise god for this opportunity that's nice. Thank you so much, Rosalind, for sharing. Yes, it's wonderful that, you know, we all can get these opportunities to uh, minister. Uh, maybe one last one. Anybody else uh, got an opportunity? Uh, usually what we do is uh, for the lifestyle evangelism classes during the in-person classes, we have role plays. Uh, so role plays, we will, what we do is during the class, we, we call one student in front and, uh, you know, we just do a role play, right? So we will try and do one of the, some of those as well, uh, because uh, studying it is good, right? The, the theory is good, uh, uh, but we also know how to do it practically, right? How to minister practically. So we will also do that. Anybody else wants to share? Uh, if not, we can just carry on with the class. Anyone else? Okay. Okay. Then let's move on. Uh, let's look at, I know a lot of these things may be known to us, uh, but it's good to refresh ourselves. It's good to, you know, remind ourselves of uh, why we are doing ministry, right? Uh, so uh, just a few points. Uh, I'm on page 21, if you're following. Now, inviting people to church uh, in there, you know, there are many ways to invite people or extend an invitation uh, for people to come to church, right? Now, one of the most strongest motivating factor uh, that, you know, that we can say to invite people to church is, is through a, a church member or a friend, right? If, now, for example, you've got friends uh, or you have family friends. If you are a member of a church, right, and you invite them, it most likely, okay, eight out of ten times, uh, they would like to come, right? Uh, most most likely, this is a survey uh, that is done. More than you know, street evangelism and all of that. When a family or a friend invites another friend to church, most likely they will come, right? Uh, now I'm not saying that street evangelism people won't come. Uh, but uh, surveys say that when it's somebody uh, who is within the church family and they're inviting somebody known, uh, most likely they will come. So let's look at a few reasons. What holds us back from extending an invitation to explore Jesus or extending an invitation to come to church? Now, I'm sure all of us, most of us at least, uh, have thought of somebody Right. Hey, I, this guy, I know him for so long. Uh, I wish I could invite him to church or I wish I could invite her to church. Uh, but something has stopped us right now. If it's not happened to anyone, it's happened to me plenty of times. Right. Uh, so let's look at a few things. Um, now, the reason we're learning this is so that going ahead, we can avoid this. Right. We can come out of that shell. Right. So let's look at a few of them. First one, sometimes we are too self-conscious and so we don't invite people, right? Uh, we're too self-conscious. Oh, what, what will people think, right? Uh, 
so don't let lack of experience or your personal challenges or your personal flaws your limitations our our weaknesses our imperfections uh you know hold us back from inviting people many a times right uh, this has happened where well, maybe we've got up in a bad mood we got upset uh and you know we're angry with somebody and then we get an opportunity we feel like hey i need to call this person invite him to church and then the enemy says why do you want to you're going to invite somebody else to church first look at yourself right first look at you what you have done you were angry you shouted at this person or you you did this sinful thing and now you want to invite somebody else to church now remember the bible teaches us that this that satan is an accuser of the brethren right the word satan means accuser right he he does all he can to accuse us of our wrong doings right uh, uh maybe he says look at the challenges you are going through you don't have a job for so long or you don't have uh, financial stability it's been so many years uh, uh look at you look at the limitations that you have imperfections that you have why are you trying to invite somebody else uh when you yourself are not blessed right uh we may have got those uh, thoughts but listen here's the important thing you are not you and i are not inviting people to ourselves we're not saying come and uh, come with me and uh, you experience what i i have we're, we're not saying that we are inviting them to explore jesus we're inviting them to experience jesus and jesus is perfect right so no matter how many imperfections we have no matter where we have failed right we are inviting people to jesus now many of us may get into ministry or maybe stepping into ministry now even as you know when i entered ministry i was very young right uh, very zealous for god very young right i was 23 when i started off uh, preaching in places 22 23 got into joined the bible college when i was 24 joined apc bible college where i was 24 years old i was very zealous you know uh but here's the thing uh there are times even uh, you know under great leadership we make mistakes right as as we grow we will make mistakes whether we are pastors whether we are prophets whatever we are we will make mistakes but here's the thing we learn from our mistakes right so just because i've made a mistake that should not stop us from inviting people to come to christ right uh, i've had my share of mistakes right even during being a pastor even during being uh, serving in the church leading a church we've all had our mistakes we've all had our challenges but here's the thing that, that 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 does not stop us from inviting people to experience jesus we don't drop the hat and say okay I've made a mistake I've done I don't want to be in ministry anymore. No, we go back to God and say God forgive me. This is the wrong I've done. We stand back again and continue what God has called us to do. The enemy is the accuser of the brethren. He wants to destroy, he wants to bring down because he knows that through you and me he can we can bring people to Christ. Now he wants to destroy that. He wants to break that. right so always remember that you are and i are inviting people not to ourselves where we share our experience that's different right this is what happened but again we are not perfect but we are directing you where we we are leading you to somebody who is perfect and that's jesus so that should not stop us from or hinder us from sharing the gospel for many years you know uh, you know you as a young boy i remember if i get angry or if there's some wrong something wrong that has happened in my life i wouldn't go out for ministry for maybe a week until i set things right and i began to you know the more i read god's word the more i pondered on god's word i'm not coming to god's presence by works the bible teaches us that we're coming to god's presence by faith in jesus christ right so that whole mindset changed hey i'm a sinner i should not i need to be right only then i can no 
We all fail. We all make mistakes. Here's the thing. Christ cleanses us of our sins. And we continue to share the gospel, leading people to Christ. So remember this. We are leading people to Jesus and not to ourselves. Two, sometimes we are afraid to face rejections or they say no. So we don't invite people. Now, remember that we cannot control people's responses. That is out of our control, right? Uh, all we can do is we can invite people. They can either say yes or they can say no, right? One of those two. If they say yes, good. Hey, great. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, I can help you with the directions, give them the details of the church, give them a heads up what happens in the church, all of that. If they say no, say, hey, it's all right. No worries. Uh, uh, and just let it be, right? Uh, now, the wrong thing, I'm sure none of us would do this, but the wrong thing to do is, uh, you know, to say, hey, you know what? You need to mend your life. Your life is like this. Your life is like that. Uh, if you don't come, you know, how long will you be like this? Uh, you know, these are the wrong ways of uh, uh, putting across uh, an invitation. Right? Uh, I remember a, a friend of mine, I had, I had invited him to, uh, you know, in APC, we have something called as Big Sundays, where, you know, uh, these Sundays we get to invite people and the message is more geared towards an evangelistic message. And, uh, um, and so we would invite people. So I remember inviting a friend of mine and he said, please don't, in, don't call me to a church. And I said, why, what happened? You know, you know uh, he was an unbeliever. I said, why, did you have a bad experience? He said, yeah, last time this other guy called me to church and I told him I won't come. He said, you'll go straight to hell. And, uh, you know, anyway, you're in sin. You're, you know, if you die today, you'll go straight to hell. And he, he put full of fear into him. He said, he said, okay, I don't even want to come to that place. Right? And, and so that's the wrong thing to do. It's okay if people reject, right? But what if they accept? Right? It could be that, you know, they come, they can experience God. It could be a divine encounter in their lives, right? So come out of that only negative feeling of what if they don't, what if they face reject, you know, what if they reject me? That's outside our control, right? Uh, three. Sometimes we are afraid others may perceive us differently. And when they perceive us differently, they may end friendship with us. Uh, and or they may say, OK, they may you know, keep distance from us. Right. Uh, and if we invite them to church, they may feel that we are radicals. Now, this is a very important point that I learned. Right? Do not compartmentalize your life and your world do not do that it's one of the things we see is monday to friday right we are just like everyone else right you know doing all the things and then saturday comes you got worship team practice right and then we put on our worship team mask and then saturday sunday is a different mask and then Sunday, okay, we got to be at church. Don't do that. That is the last thing we should do because who we are in Christ, it's who we really are. Whether it's in the workplace, Monday to Friday, right? Or whether it's a Saturday, Sunday, we know who we are, right? Never compartmentalize it. Imagine this, picture this, right? Uh, imagine Monday to Friday, you're with your friends and, uh, you know, uh, maybe they're into all these bad habits and we get involved in that. Just picture this, right? And then suddenly on Saturday, you feel, hey, I have to go to church on Sunday. Uh, and then you say, hey, why don't you come to church with us? You try to invite a friend. And in church, you're saying, hey, thank you, God, praise the Lord and all of that. And this friend is looking at you and thinking, hey, there's something wrong. Monday to Friday, you know, you, you, you're doing something, and I know you in office, but Saturday and Sunday, you're somebody else. Now, that, that would be a wrong thing to do, right? Always remember that we, sh we, are, we need to be who we are, wherever we are. Remember working, when I was working in the IT sector, I, I worked in uh, Dell and then in IBM a couple of years, 
uh, I remember it was very difficult, right? Everyone in the office are like, hey, let's do this, let's do that, let's go out on this, uh, uh, you know, on this, uh, what do you call, camping trip, or uh, we'll go out and have a party, we'll do this, we'll do that. And I was uh, uh, like a team leader for a team of about 17 people. So they would say, hey, Paul, you're the team leader. We should plan something. Uh, we should go to this place or that place. I say, yeah, OK, we can plan. But uh, most probably, I will not be able to come. Because most of their plans would be in, you know, in some resort and all kinds of things. Uh, and so they would say, hey, come on, Paul, you're the team leader. So I realized that one day I was praying. I said, God. When he put it in my heart, you can go, but you don't have to do what they're doing. You can be a witness even there. right? Uh, and, and so they knew that I'm a Christian. They knew that I don't smoke, I don't drink. They knew that, you know, most of the time, I, you know, uh, I'm only reading something or, you know, after work, I'm doing something. We had our, you know, Bible study early in the morning before class. They knew that they had one fanatic as a team leader. They knew that. Uh, but. Uh, I remember the Lord very clearly ministering to me, and I started going with them for these camps and uh, you know these outings that they do. Um, and they used to offer me all kinds of things, and I say, no, you know, no, I don't do. It. And then that's when they truly, the team, my team folks, they would come and speak to me. I was surprised. These are guys, hardcore guys. They would come and speak to me. They say, Paul, I, you know, these are the things that are happening in my life. And all this while, I never knew. I thought, okay, everything's fine. But they would say, you know, my marriage is breaking. I don't want my marriage to break. Uh, this is what's happening. It's It's been five years. And these are guys who are 35, 40 years old in the IT sector for many years. And my marriage is breaking. Or uh, uh, I feel like committing suicide. And I realized that my whole team, almost everyone, are going through huge problems. And they were saying, they were saying, you know, uh, uh, Paul, I want what you have, right? The same person, Monday to Sunday. So very important. Do not, do not compartmentalize your life. Just be who you are. Just be the, just the way you are, right? If you feel that there's something that is a fake uh, or you feel that you're putting on a mask, take it off, break it off. Ask God to break it off. Ask the Holy Spirit to break it off you. Don't wear a mask, right? Be who you are from Monday to Sunday, right? Fourth point, we are afraid we don't have an the answers, all the answers, and won't be able to answer the questions. We looked at this in uh, overcoming inhibitions, right? Uh, we invite friends uh, we who are just regular people. Uh, and, and remember that we also, and we, we we can tell them, hey, I don't know all the answers. You may have studied all your you know great uh, higher theological studies. What I know, I will give to you. I I'm reminded of that uh, the blind man. What a powerful testimony! He says, uh, tell me who did this to you? And he says, a man named Jesus came. He said he put. Uh, of sand in my eyes. He said, go wash it. After I washed it, uh, I could see. No, tell us the truth. He says, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying this is what it is. Who is he? I don't know who is he. I don't know what he's done. I don't know whether you uh, he's a messiah or he's not the messiah. One thing I know, I was blind, now I see. I, what a powerful testimony. So we can say that, hey, I don't know all the answers. I don't know, you know, all the well, mysteries of the word of God. But one thing I know, that I was a sinner, but now Christ set me free. Right? So all the time, remember that we may not know all the answers, yet uh, we can let them know and invite them. See, you explore, you experience, you see what it is. And there is, you know, later on we look at uh, the chapter on discipleship also, how to disciple people. There will come a time when you will have to disciple, mentor people, teach them, provide, uh, you know, uh, training for them. A time will come. But in the initial stage of inviting people, don't be afraid that you don't know the answers. Right? And secondly, also don't, don't, you know, pretend that you know all the answers. That's also another wrong thing to do. Right. Just be normal. Just, just be a normal person. Invite people. Fifth one. 
sometimes we are too worried about the church service what if it's too irrelevant uh, or what if they feel out of place what if they don't fit in so why to invite people now remember this is always a risk right uh, what if they don't uh, like the service what if it's irrelevant what if they feel out of place it's a risk right uh, but remember that uh, we are looking for the holy spirit to do something deep in their heart right from time to time we have these special services there'll be these special sermons evangelistic meetings worship times now we can invite them now there will be times when they may feel we may feel hey it's not uh, what if they feel it's irrelevant don't worry about that right? just just invite them uh come out of that feeling oh what if they don't like it what if they uh, don't meet anybody right uh, it's all right uh, it, it's not only about you know meeting people or uh, you know uh, uh, meeting their particular needs what god wants to do is to minister to their heart right uh, uh, like i always we also looked at in the last chapter the holy spirit does the conviction it is basically like we're bringing somebody and placing them before the lord and the lord will deal with them in their own way right uh, so he may speak to them through the worship he may speak to them through the word he may speak to them through uh, what is happening in fellowship in any way he may speak to them i, I remember this one time i invited a friend to one of our locations it was an early morning service so we have at 8 am uh, our location started at 8 am and so um, uh, i i told him why don't you come you just stay very close by and it was towards the south of uh, bangalore and uh, i said why don't you come you just stay uh, close by uh, and he was new to bangalore he came from another city just to study there and uh, um he said no i have to go to the temple i have some work also so he he didn't come uh but after a couple of sundays i uh, i encouraged him i said why don't you come so he came he came only because i i told him like you know you can come uh, there are youth and all of that so he came uh the entire service went on he service got over and i saw him talking to the youth in the church right and i was really happy i said okay he's you know he's mingling with the youth and he was talking to all of them they were having a good time and i just waited and uh, the entire service got they all finished talking and and then i dropped him home uh and then later on i asked him how 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 is the service he said uh, i don't know about all the songs and the word and whoever was uh, talking there but one thing i liked was the youth did not even question me about whether i'm a hindu whether i'm a muslim they did not even you know the same way they were talk to their other friends they spoke to me the same way right so this boy was not touched by the worship he was not touched by the prayer he was not touched by the uh, sermon right he was touched by the youth of our church who did not judge him for the way he came or did not you know say okay you, you know they didn't look badly at him and that was amazing and he said i've never seen this i always thought that christians are you know like this you know? he said they treated me so well they knew i was a hindu they knew that you know uh, i was not interested uh, yet they were so kind and so generous and so loving they spoke to me as if you know they knew me for uh, you know for a long time and i felt just so comfortable he said i am going to come next week also he said right so so he may have felt out of place during the service right? during the worship during the word that's out of our control he may have felt uh, what is this it's not making sense felt irrelevant but what happened after the service the way he the the, the youth of the church was talking to him they were touched he was touched and he started coming to church he finished you know he came those three years uh of his study time he came to the same church he gave his life to christ in that church and then he's gone back to his hometown uh, so it was all you know not the word it was not the worship it was just the way that our youth 
you know, uh, ministered and just said, just being normal with him. None of our youth said, you know, uh, oh, you have to give your life to Christ. This is what, uh, you know, Jesus did for me. Nothing. Just be normal. Right. And God ministered to him. So we can come out of that inhibition saying, oh, what if they uh, don't like the service? What if it's irrelevant? It's all right. God can use anything. Uh, I'll give you this example. I'm reminded. I just remember this. There was this time we had a we had a worship evening, and uh, this was in Bangalore. I forget what year. I think it was 2013. 2013, I guess. We had a worship uh, evening. Now we were, uh, you know, uh, we would go out and you know do these outreaches and you know just go to colleges, give out invites, people on the streets, and we did all of that. And this uh, young man said, "I'll come," and all of that. And he was a Hindu guy. So I said, "Okay." I took down his number. I said, "I'll call you on that day. I'll remind you if you need directions, you come." And and so he he came. Right. I don't know him too well too. And. Uh, he came for the whole thing, and it was a you know worship evening. We have a very good worship team. Uh, Nikki, who's here, was part of that team, I guess, on that day. Uh, and the, the worship, everything went on, right? Uh, pastor came and we shared a small five-minute word, and then the thing got over. The whole uh, it was like a concert, and got over. And after the concert, I called him. I said, "Hey, how did you like it?" He said, "Yeah, I wanted to call you and talk." So I met with him and he said this i was really surprised he's I, I was expecting him to say wow i you know i enjoy the word or the he said during the worship during the concert time on the ppt right where we show the lyrics there was a cross that you know now we have these new ppts which where you can have these images moving about uh, at the background and it projects the lyrics um and so the cross was like a, you know, it was a kind of a red cross or something. And that cross was like piercing his eyes. You know, so all he did that entire time of the concert was look at that cross. Right. That's all. He he didn't understand the songs. Of course, he uh, he understood English and all of it, but the songs didn't mean anything to him. The sermon didn't mean anything to him, but his eyes was only fixed on that PPT, on the cross, right? Uh, it was just a normal auditorium, so it's not a church. It's just an auditorium. But his eyes was fixed on the cross. So he's looking at the PPT, and he said, what is that cross? It spoke to me that whole night that cross is coming into my mind, and it's in my uh, mind's eye. I'm in college. I see that cross. I'm in the uh, supermarket. I see the cross. What is that cross? That was an open door. And I told him what the cross was. Right? I told him what Jesus did on the cross. So you see, God can use as something as simple as a PPT presentation, a cross on the PPT, to convict a person. So who are we to say this can be irrelevant? Nobody, uh, when we were you know, preparing for the concert, nobody's thought, okay, we'll have the PPT like this, there should be a cross, nobody cares about all that, you know, said, okay, we have a PPT team, okay, you give them the songs, they project the lyrics, that's all, right? They didn't decide, okay, we'll put the cross, it was just some, you know, some of those things that you choose, and so who are we to limit what God can do, right? Uh, so overcome, overcome that feeling of, you know, uh, it may not be relevant. It, they may feel out of place. They won't fit in. No, God can use the simplest of things to minister to people. Right? Okay, we got a question here from Ribika. What is the difference between inviting people and choosing people from God? What's the difference between inviting people and chosen people from God? Uh, so uh, I'm not sure what you're trying to ask, Rebecca. But is it? Uh, yeah, maybe your question is: What is the difference between us evangelizing and God choosing people uh, to be in His fold? Is that what your question is? Uh, can you give me some clarity? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, Rebecca. See, the Bible teaches us, Jesus himself said, uh, right, uh, 
to go out and evangelize. Even when he was, uh, you know, in this world, he made a team of uh, 70 and he divided them into two. He said, go and evangelize, right? So evangelism is a responsibility, right? We're fulfilling the big commission. Now, as we evangelize, what we are doing is like in the parable of the sower, again, Jesus is explaining to his disciples. He's saying it's like a seed being planted, right? Uh, it, some are planted on stony ground, some are planted on thorns, some are planted on good ground. And, and so the more the word goes in and the more they are able to accept this, they are you know, into God's kingdom. Whom God chooses is those who accept the gospel, right? And that is why John 3.16 says, God so loved the world, right? So there is no place where God says, okay, this guy, he cannot come under the cross or this person, it's too much, he cannot come. So whoever is called or whoever has received the gospel and they, and they receive it and they accept it, they're part of God's kingdom. Right? They're part of, they're chosen from God. God begins to work in them. Now, there will be times when who God calls, there will be different callings upon people's life, right? Once we are in God's kingdom, there are different callings. And we'll, I'm sure you're learning about that, right? The ministry of an evangelist, pastor, and uh, uh, prophet, and uh, teacher, and all of that. So there's a fivefold ministry. And, and, and so whoever believes in this gospel will be saved. And once we are saved, God chooses us for different purposes. And that is a calling that we have upon our lives. And, and our, usually our gifts and our callings go together, right? Now, if we don't know anything about singing, we can't say, God, help me to become a worship leader, right? It just doesn't, uh, it's just, you know, God uses our gifts and, uh, and, and, uh, and the gifts that we have and our calling always goes together. So, so yes. So that's, I hope that answers your question, Rebecca. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you. So anybody else have any question, any thoughts? Okay. Now, another important point. Very important point. Do not invite friends who are already Christians. Now, that will be, instead of building God's kingdom, we'll be ending up dividing God's kingdom, right? Do not invite friends who are already part of another church, right? And that's going to cause a lot of trouble, right? Let's let them be. If you feel that, hey, their doctrine is wrong, present the gospel to them. Ask them, hey, why don't you read this? Why don't you read the scripture? Now, there are a lot of denominations, a lot of different kinds of teachings. But don't go to a place of saying, you come to my church, then you will know what Christianity is. No, don't do that, right? If you're already part of a church and and you feel, even though they, that may not be the right teaching, it's okay. Present Jesus to them. Present the truth of the, God, of the word of God. And, and the truth will set them free. If they want to come on their own, then it's all right, right? Uh, and then again, there is a, it's important to be uh, do it in an honorable way. They can inform their leadership and then come be part of the other church. But do not say, okay, you know, this is all wrong. You Why don't you come here and you see what we do? No, don't do that, right? Uh, we are here to build God's kingdom, right? So when God sees us, he sees us as one body saved by the blood of Christ. He doesn't care about denominations. Right? God does not look at denominations. He looks at us as one body. Right? So how do you make an invitation to someone to come to church? Be simple. Right? Don't, don't say, okay, uh, you know, don't over-exaggerate. Right? Um, oh, you should come and see the worship. We have the best worship team in the entire city. Uh, and then we have the best guitarists and we have the best singers. Don't exaggerate. Right? Just be simple. Hey, why don't you come? See for yourself. We have a good worship team. The word is going to be preached. Right? Be truthful. 
Now, I've, I've heard of many cases where a Christian has invited uh, an unbelieving friend or somebody else and has told them it's an inspirational talk that will help you for your new business, right? And so this person comes to church and then he realizes that, hey, this is no inspirational talk. They are talking about somebody from the Bible and all of it. And he was highly offended. Right. So be truthful. Do not say it's an inspirational talk and all of it. Right. Just say it is the word of God. So we will be teaching from the Bible. We'll be singing Christian songs. Be truthful. Right. Uh, three, be inviting and not coercing, which means uh, don't force them. Uh, just invite them. Right. Uh, so these three simple points. Be simple, be truthful, be inviting without coercing. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, any other questions anyone has? Uh, uh, or we can just continue. What I thought was, uh, uh, oh, we have just three minutes left. Okay. Uh, maybe next week, what we'll do is... Uh, We'll do a few role plays, right? So basically, we'll we'll have one person act as if he or she is a Hindu or a Muslim, uh, and we'll do a few role plays. I know online it's going to be a little bit of a challenge, but let's do it so that we also, even as we learn the theory, we also learn the practical things, right? Uh, now, just a few points on what we should do after their first visit to a church or a cell group. Okay, first one, help them process what they've heard or what they saw, what they experienced, right? So if you've invited somebody, they've finished church, they've gone back home, call them. Hey, did you like the church service, right? Uh, help them process what they saw. Okay, usually we have worship. We sing songs. It's, a, it's an act of worship to God. We're praising God. We're thanking him. Uh, you're, so you're helping them process it. Then what you saw was a man came in front, he preached, a man or a woman came in front, uh, and they began to preach and say things, that is the word of God, that's what the Bible, that's what we believe in. And 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 especially times of communion, they will not understand what it is. So explain to them. So this is something uh, uh, that we do where we believe that this is the body, the blood of Jesus, and uh, uh, this is to remember what he did on the cross. So you're explaining to them, you're helping them process very important point here is don't be on the defensive. They say, uh, uh, you know, uh, hey, uh, Paul, for example, so somebody I invited says, hey, Paul, I, I didn't really like the service. Now, don't get offended and don't go on the defense and say that's because you didn't, you don't know anything about Christianity. Don't do that. Right. Uh, or that's because you were maybe sleeping during the service. No. This, this, oh, okay, you didn't like the service. It's all right. Maybe uh, I can invite you to another service where there is, uh, you know, a, a youth meeting where there are more people of your age. And uh, right, so you you deal with it the right way. Now, secondly, once they like this, if they like the service, if they want to continue, help them connect with the church community, right? Uh, find out people who can, you know, be friends with them. Uh, have a personal invitation of, you know, just having a friendship. Now, friendships are very important, very, very important, right? Uh, uh, even in our church in Bangalore, we have something called as the VIP banquet. Where what we used to do is we would get all of them who are new to church, probably uh, three months who are new to church. Now, they don't know anybody in church, right? So we would get them, we would have a lunch with the pastoral team and a few of the leaders. So what is happening? Uh, they are new to church, but immediately after this whole uh, VIP banquet, they they know the leaders of the. So even when they come to church, they say, "Hey, I know this person." They're able to, you know, relate to and bring some sort of conversation to uh, uh, to get them to be okay, right? Uh, so an important welcoming new people is very important. Uh, a smile to say hello to them is important. Imagine you got one. Uh, you know, uh, an inviter in the entrance of the church with a grumpy face. Now, that person will want to turn back and go back home. Uh, so it's very important to have, you know, all these things count. All these things count. We may think, oh, it's okay, just put somebody there. No, no, no. Uh, God can use just a smile to touch people's heart. They may be coming with such a burden in their heart, and that smile could just, you know, uh, bring something in their life. So uh, it's important to 
be welcoming, help them to connect with the church community. Uh, thirdly, continue to invite them back if they are open, right? Uh, fourthly, if they've made a decision uh, for Christ, work with them, help them to grow. Uh, you know, again, teach them the importance of reading the word, prayer. Uh, and then even through the end of this course, we will talk about discipleship and how important discipleship is. Uh, so, so let's end today's class. Um, I hope you've been able to take a few points uh, from this. And uh, again, before I close, I want to encourage each one of us. If you get opportunities, whether it's by phone, whether it's by, uh, you know, meeting somebody, uh, do try and, you know, present the gospel. You never know what the Lord can do. Amen. So uh, could one of us please close in prayer? Uh, Divya, can you please close in prayer? Sure, sure. Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this uh, wonderful opportunity, Father, where we are learning, uh, Lord, uh, the uh, many concepts, Father, Lord, uh, regarding evangelism. We know, Father, that it is not only really for, uh, Lord, uh, being a, a knowledge for us, Father, Lord, but you help us, Father, that uh, we be able to apply it, Father, Lord, that we'll be able to, uh, Lord, explore it, Father, Lord, we know, Father, it is not uh, uh, that uh, we uh, who are changing or we who are, uh, Father Lord, um, uh, uh, Lord, uh, ministering, Father. It is by the Holy Spirit, Lord. Yes, Lord, it is not by might or uh, by power, but by the Spirit. Yes, Lord. So we pray that you uh, enable us, Father, uh, to um, obey, Lord, the nudging of the Holy Spirit, Father, Lord. Whenever, Lord, we get opportunities, help us look out for those opportunities, Father, Lord, uh, that we'll share the gospel, Lord. Let our lives become testimonies, Father, Lord, uh, that uh, people around us, Father, uh, will come to know of this uh, loving Father that we have, the mighty God that uh, we serve, Lord. I, I pray, Lord, your blessing over Pastor Paul, Lord. Thank you and praise you, Father, for all the testimonies, all the experiences, Father, Lord, all the uh, Lord, all these things that uh, he teaches, Father. Lord, I pray that you um, continue, Father, to shower your grace, your mercy, Lord, your wisdom, Father, Lord, uh, into his life, Father. Um, I pray for each and every one uh, present here, Father. May your grace uh, be with each one of us, Father, Lord. And as we go, uh, Lord, get out of the class, Father. Lord, let us not forget, Father, what we have learned, but uh, let it take root, Father, in our hearts, Lord, and let it become a lifestyle for us, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Divya. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful week ahead. God bless you all.